So in this segment of In the Dirt, we'd like to show you some of the results of our time-lapse photography study that we've done in Rodney, Ontario and also out uh, near uh, on a site in Lincoln, Nebraska. It's always been a challenge with vertical tillage to see and be able to demonstrate to producers the effect of uh, residue management and, and how it affects the level of residue, the weight of residue, the volume of residue and its effect on insects and disease uh, since when your first your first pass in the fall, your pass in the fall uh, seems to have little or no effect. So if you look at the view from the Rodney camera, if you imagine yourself the camera, if you look on the right as, as the time elapses you can see that even though we've had a very severe winter with lots of snow and low temperatures we're able to affect the temperature of the soil and and what that's telling us is that the biological activity in these in this area where we've used a true vertical tillage tool to manage the residue that biological activity is higher and it's warming up warming up the soil melting the snow and as you can see the ground is starting to darken up so it's going to attract more sunlight and more heat so that biological activity will speed up as the ground gets warmer compared to the side on the left which was harvested with a, a stock chopping head and no vertical tillage to manage further manage the residue so not everyone has access to time-lapse photography equipment or the or the time to do it but with some very simple tools we can quickly assess how much residue or how much influence we've had on residue remaining on the field you know, we can put a measured a device with a measured area down say on the, on this side over here where we can take a look at how much residue is left behind the chopping corn head and observe how much ground cover there is as well as then uh, collect that residue and weigh it then we can go over put that same device down collect the material that's on the ground we can observe how much more bare ground there is and then we can weigh that sample and compare it to uh, where the residue hasn't been processed. The, uh, the other method that's very simple is just simply take a tape measure, lay it out on the ground and you can count the number of pieces of residue that, that touch every foot increment on your tape measure. Then go over and compare the other side and, and uh, you can actually assess the percentage of residue cover that still remains on the ground where you've processed the residue. So you've managed the residue but you haven't uh, really disturbed the soil very much. And in terms of conservation we've, we've opened the window, we've accelerated our, our decomposition uh, but we've still protected the soil from wind and water erosion. So over here on this side, it's very important that we recognize that, that we've processed the residue, but we haven't done a lot of soil disturbance. We've, we've conditioned that residue, we've, we've put it in contact with the soil, we've resized it, uh, we, we've allowed the, the elements to get inside it, and along with that, the, the fungi and bacteria that are digesting it. As you'll note, there's a lot of stalks still anchored. They're beat up. They're starting to break down, they're starting to be digested, but they're still anchored against wind erosion and, and water erosion. So we, we haven't tilled that soil, we've managed the residue. And that's allowing us to warm that part of, of the soil up, warm up that seedbed surface, allows us to get in plant a little faster, a little sooner with fewer planting problems than on our right where we've simply chopped the stalks with a chopping corn head. On this side we'll notice there's a lot of material on the ground. Below that material the ground is going to stay fairly cold and wet and as you see in the time-lapse photography it was the last area for the snow to leave and it's the last area to darken up so it's not attracting as much sunlight. Also the stalks are very tough inside. They're, you have to cut them open it's very obvious that the habitat inside that stock would still support any insects that happen to, to harbor and overwinter in that stock. So simply by processing the stocks, we've decreased the habitat, we've warmed up the soil, created better seed bed conditions and less problems for the planter uh, come planting time. So that, 
that little effort, that vertical tillage effort, which is very inexpensive even compared to a chopping corn head, has, has moved our, opened our window, it's moved our planting date forward and give us a jump. And as, as we all know, those early planting dates are going to out yield the later ones nine times out of ten.